Hi, this is Lynn Hunter, L-L-Y-N-H-U-N-T-E-R. I'm a storyboard artist for animation and an illustrator. And today we're going to start out with um, fixing a major mistake. Okay, I did J for jellyfish for my, I'm doing a beach bet, basically all things around the beach and in the water around the beach, and J is going to be jellyfish. I had made a problem here, though. This particular jellyfish is not a jellyfish. This is a Portuguese man of war. And I, the thing is, is that I want kids learn, starting out better than, you know, me. It's like, I love Portuguese man of war. Um, technically, they're a colony animal. They're considered a hydra or they're, they're in, a, in a family of, of basically they're related to jellyfish. But technically, the top part is a, a group of type of animals, and the bottom is a part of type of animals, and they even have an extra type of stinging cell in there that is another group of, of cells that's another different type of animals. And they all live together to create this floating colony that doesn't really move on its own where jellyfish do. So I decided I really need to do a different jellyfish. So I've decided to do... Um, a Google search. I'm mean, basically I'm going to show you how I go about doing research to do something to make it correct. Anyways, um, I went online. I have an iPad here, and oops, upside down. Of course, um, I just went online to find all different kinds of jellyfish. And mind you, those are copyrighted, so it's like mm, I'm giving a quick glance here, so I'm not doing it. So you can see them real fast. But I mean, I'll use all those images. I, I'll just take up the page. This is for the Pacific nettle jellyfish. So I know for the fact it is a jellyfish. And I'm going to put that out of camera. And I'm going to use that as my reference while I'm creating the drawing. So that I, I have something to see while I'm doing this. So um, I'm not flying blind. This is not exclusively out of my imagination. Now the tools we're going to be using today, I've got a marvelous Bic stick, one of my favorite tools. That's what we're going to use for inking. I have a nice Pilot Regrip 0.5 mechanical pencil. I'm just using this one. I like actually um, standard wood sharpened pencils, but um, I will use whatever um, is handy and available and the nice thing about mechanical pencils is that when the point gets still you can break the tip and you can have another sharp tip and you don't have to sharpen them all the time and you just click them forward so that's the nice thing about mechanical pencils um, the nice thing about wood pencils even though you have to sharpen them all the time is they have a better variety of line and they can well you can get these in different leads too but um, just for now, this is actually convenient. That's why I'm using it. Needed eraser, my my favorite kind of eraser. Um, when I'm totally done, I'll pull out a latex eraser for erasing too, because latex erasers will get all the pencil drawing out, whereas this will get most of it, or you have to really work hard. But um, I like it because I use it for ghosting, what I call ghosting back. I I like to redraw and redraw and redraw, and it, it's kind of like taking the carving and sanding it down and that's what a kneading kneaded eraser is really good for they come in little square packs you can get them at any art supply store and just if you can't it's they're usually with pencils they're usually in the um, drawing section and just ask the person at the sales desk for a kneaded eraser like needed kneaded dough I'm gonna put my water out of the way here for now um, what I'm using is I like to use a 4x6 pad. This is a Canson um, watercolor pad. It's a um, Montval. And, uh, it, it, it's an easy thing to draw and you don't have to worry about the edges being taped or anything. And I'm doing all these about the same size so it's easier for measurements. Okay, I'm using a little 6 inch ruler here because what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark off um, I've already drawn a line here. This is a half inch in from the edge. And then I'm going to mark off three inch. Let's see if that's on camera. I'm going to back my paints out of the way. I'm trying to keep everything <laughs> in relatively in frame here. Um, but anyway, I'm going to mark off three inches here. And 
this these um, letters that I'm drawing fit within about um, a three by three inch area. A J is a little bit narrower than three by three. I buy I ball a lot of things. Um, one of the things I've learned over the years is um, measurements by adjusting. But you'll notice I'm using a ruler right now. Okay, so this is my J. This has got the approximate sizes that I did before, and from this side to this side, it's about two and a quarter inches. So I'm gonna find the center of my line here. So it's about three inches, and then to either side. So there's one inch, one inch, and then an eighth, and an eighth. So there's my, my two, and, basically there's the, the two and a quarter inches. Okay, and then I'll, I'm gonna eyeball it rather than, I could remeasure the other side over here, um, but what I'm doing is I'm eyeballing this distance from here to here and this distance from here to here and going, ah, that's about right, and drawing the line down. And if you wanted to measure it after the fact, you'd go, you'd measure it and go, okay, that's about um, one and seven eighths in, and that's about one and seven eighths in. Wow, I got it. So the thing is, it's fun to sometimes do that just to work on your ability to um, estimate distances. And I'm usually pretty dang close. And and these particular letters aren't, you know, totally right on. And again, what I'm doing, I'm just this distance from here to here and this distance from here to here. So that that rectangle is about, these are right angles here and here. And if you can learn how to eyeball that type of distance, when you're doing other projects, you can, you know, you don't need to pull out your ruler every five minutes. Okay, so on this J, I've made this distance about, mm, it's a little, it's about an inch. And this one, yeah, it's about an inch. And then the space in between is about, um, looks like a quarter. So I'm going to go from the center here and just put a quarter here because that's my center mark, a quarter here. And again, I'm just going to eyeball it rather than, like I said, I could measure the top and bottom if, if you don't feel comfortable with eyeballing it or estimating that distance, go ahead and measure it. There's nothing stopping you from doing it. It's just... With me, I, I look at the standpoint that's a you know another piece of time and judging and what have you, and I can just do it this way. Um, and for this one, I put the J about. Mm, let's see here. It looks like approximately one and three eighths, where I put the line across the J. And this is all kind of a rough. It's all total rough estimation uh, based on what I know a J to base. So now I'm just gonna. I'm going to eyeball that line across there. That's about where the J is. And then I'm going to put a curve down here. And, rough, rough, and that, that curve will start about there. And I'll rough estimate it about there. I said th this is going to be an organic shape to begin with. But it's kind of like that difference between creating an organic shape and an industrial shape because we're we're making a J here and there it is you know put a little that little curve in there and I'm going eh, maybe pull it up just a little further so you're looking at this distance here being the same as this kind of radius around here so that where you're putting the U that that U on your J is about the same across all those distances and I might uh, kind of make that curve a little bit rounder rather than square give it a little bit more of a, a friendly J feel okay now the top of our jellyfish is basically um, kind of like a, a half sack and it's gonna fit into this section here but it it's kind of like an umbrella or a mushroom but because it's a jellyfish, it can contort and it will fit in there. 
And this particular gel jellyfish will kind of radiate around. So I'm going to take that, you know, a little bit of an angle there to give it a feel like, like this is going to be the top of the jellyfish here. And the jellyfish has lines that kind of radiate out like um, the spokes on an umbrella. And then it has like scallops. And the scallops are kind of rating, coming down to the bottom of where those lines are. And I'm just kind of roughing this in. Um, again, the nice thing about pencil is it'll erase. So you can go, okay, I didn't put that line quite where I wanted it. I'll put another right line here. And maybe I'll use this line instead of that one. Or maybe I'll actually put something a little bit more toward the center of both of them. And that I can decide, you know, as I'm moving along here. But I'm, I'm still going around. We've got, again, this, this umbrella shape. And I want a little bit in the background because the, the jellyfish in the front is opaque, but it's trans, it, because it, it, the cup or the mushroom part of the, the head comes up there. So you can see now we've got like a little, almost like a shuttlecock shape here with the, um, the feathers going inward. Okay, now the jellyfish has kind of this um, mass. And so I'm creating a mass of where we have these kind of fluffy tentacles come in. And they're going to go back to here. Is They, they look kind of, um, oh, feathery. or um, They remind me of the ruffles in, in a 60s blouse almost. Um, there's a marvelous, marvelous... Um, comic book out of Japan called Princess Jellyfish. If, if you're anywhere an artist, I mean, you, you'd love Princess Jellyfish. It's, it's about a girl who's basically um, a jellyfish geek. She loves jellyfish and she draws nothing but jellyfish. And um, uh, a young man who is into fashion convinces her to create dresses out of her jellyfish designs. Now, the jellyfish has um, tentacles that kind of rotate around this bell here. It's got these massive fluffy ones in the inside, and it's got these other ones that rotate around the top. And I'm going to use those to define this J shape. So I want to have those come out around here. And I'm doing them kind of haphazardly because... Um, um, a jellyfish is a very organic thing, and so it's it doesn't have. If you you look at images of jellyfish, they their um, tentacles don't always fall into line. They go kind of haphazardly around, and also um, the ends of the jellyfish will sometimes have um, jaggedy lines. Okay, so we've got our initial. Um, lines going through here. And now I'm going to kind of try to define this inner mass again because it's kind of got a um, like um, an S shape and going up. And I'm going to what, what I'm going to do now with my kneaded eraser I'm going to kind of what I call ghosting back. It's like I've drawn all those lines, but they're all getting too strong, and they're all standing up over each other. And I'm going to basically not fully erase the lines. You can still see them. They leave. Um, I think it's because the graphite is, has kind of a greasy quality. It, it leaves behind a bit of a residue, even though it's um, particulate. You can see there. You can see I'm leaving red. And the heavier lines, the lines I put more emphasis on, will have a tendency to stay darker than the ones that I didn't. And then I'll go back in and go, okay, I really, I like certain lines and I didn't like others. And this is like a mass here that I want to define more. Let's see here, where's my, there we go. Just getting some more lead out. Getting the lead out. Um, so I'm, I'm working with kind of these S curves here to define the shape a little more and there's like um, kind of like two to three masses of this stuff 
in there. And it's like, again, this is, this is to have the illusion to real jellyfish, not so much, um, an actual jellyfish. So, um, trying to really want to make this area a little bit rounder. Just don't think I gave it quite enough curve. It's too flat at the bottom. There we go. And then I erased that away. But you can see I still have my guidelines down there. I can still see where I, I drew my um, pencil lines to guide me where I want to put the edge of that information. Okay, and now I'm going to take this area and give it a little bit of of uh, that little S quality. And this is setting up, um, it's kind of like when you're doing dot to dot when you're a kid or when you, if you still do dot to dot now, that um, these are guidelines. These are giving me edges of where I'm going to lay my ink in and where I'm going to put lines down. So I'm being very haphazard at the moment um, just because even in, in nature, what it is is you're getting patterned down, but you're still seeing a haphazard feel. And then I want to put the lines over the top of this again. And these will cross over each other too, because if you look at a jellyfish, they have lots of tentacles all over the place. They, they just come in a kind of a pattern to them. Okay. I think we've got... That's our initial drawing. Okay. Now, I'm going to, again, I'm, I'm going to take the kneaded eraser. And what I'm going to do is kind of flatten it out. If you've ever tried to play with Silly Putty, or if you've never played with Silly, silly Putty, go online to Amazon and get yourself some Silly Putty. You could also probably use Silly Putty doing this. If you want to try using Silly Putty, it does, I don't think it works quite as well as an actual kneaded eraser. But what you're doing is you're blotting, I'm flattening out and I'm blotting up a lot of the residue of my pencil. So you can see there's still a ghost, like I said, I call it ghosting because there's a ghost of a drawing there. Um, and it would be the same thing if you were drawing um, with plain paper on top of a light box um, it's giving me the basis for my drawing. Now, when you're using ballpoint pen, um, everybody thinks they've used ballpoint pen for a million years and they know how to use it. Um, but as an art tool, I would highly recommend you have, um, a piece of paper to get your ball rolling, literally get the ball rolling. And what happens is, is there is ink that builds up on the tip as it's rolling. So occasionally you want to like wipe off that tip. Um, you will get blots, um, and there are ways of getting rid of mistakes with pen. Um, I use usually an X-Acto knife very carefully, and I scrape away my drawings, or scrape away the ink. But um, we're going to start up here with the, uh, with the top. And you get, see, remember we've got that, that area up here where the line is, um, and then we're coming down the side. Now the first thing that, that uh, I want to do, let's see here, is my iPad, of course, went off. There we go. Um, is that the, the tentacles that hang from the bell itself are in front. So I'm going to start with those guys. And as you go along, the problem, you, one of the reasons why you do want to um, erase away the, uh, the pencil line too is because the um, ballpoint pen ink um, won't adhere to the paper as well if you've got a lot of uh, pencil line beneath it. So what I'll 
do here is once we get the initial drawing down I will go back in and um, erase much of the pencil line that we've already put down and right now what I'm doing is I'm parallel I'm making a parallel line to the uh, tentacle now the thing is too is that I am not good at drawing straight lines or clear lines so you can see I'm doing these like little brushy strokes when I when I uh, um, do my uh, ink lines I have a tendency I, it's like I'm thinking about think about your ink line like a brush and I'm going over and over and over the line so that I have hopefully a straighter line and you can tell that you know that part of my style is I don't do the perfect line I am not I'm, I'm I have a very strange way of, of approaching things I'm a perfectionist who's not a perfectionist it's like I get heavy into detail and there's a part of me that has that perfectionist attitude but a lot of it is just um, I'm also extremely messy I'm a little bit of both um, a little bit schizophrenic in that type of uh, um, situation so you can see what I'm doing is is that we've got the pencil lines underneath here and I'm kind of following through the haphazard lines I drew before and so some of them float in and some of them float out but right now, like I said, I'm, I'm concerned about the tentacles that are attached to the bell. And I'm not, like I said, I'm not really being totally worried about parallel lines because, um, like I said, if you look on a, um, always have some, you know, I've got that whole page of reference in front of me of the jellyfish. And while I'm doing this, I'm, I'm occasionally looking up and saying, okay, does that look more or less like what I see in front of me? And if it doesn't look exactly, well, let's put it this way. When from moment to moment, if you see a film of a jellyfish, does it take the exact same form? So they, they kind of mush and go up and mush and go down and they have a shape to them, but it is rarely a permanent shape. I'm going to take a tentacle on. Um, part of the, the pattern, it's like you've got three curves here that are exactly the same. And one of the problems I have personally is I keep on wanting to do the same thing over and over again. You want, It's like we've got a pattern here, but you'll notice this one's a little bit farther. This one's closer. This one's closer. Um, as much as you can try to do things that are similar but varied now you can see right there I've got the the ink on my ballpoint is heaving up it's about to glop on me and so I'm going to roll that ballpoint pen on my paper towel and wipe it off before I go back and do some more work on that and then I'm going to start throwing in these little the frills the frilly tentacles and again um, I'm not totally concerned that every line is linked um, that's me in general and specific how you approach your drawing is the way you want to approach your drawing I'm very big on um, there is no correct way to do art. There are different um, kinds and styles of art that you can do, but there is no exact way to do a drawing. Everybody has their own way of doing it, and what feels comfortable to you, what you, when you're drawing, um, part of the problem is, is I don't think there's ever a time when drawing feels absolutely comfortable or absolutely perfect. Um, 
I think the people who feel that way about their drawing style and their work are, are um, very unique. I don't think there are a lot of people out there. I've been, <laughs> I've been working at my craft for ever since I could hold a pencil. So I would say that's probably somewhere around three. So maybe uh, uh, 59 years <laughs> that I've been, you know, trying to, to create the illusion of the world in front of me on paper or um, in various ways. I like to create more realistic things. Um, I haven't done a lot of abstract art, but when you think about it, everything you do is abstract art. Um, that I'm giving you an illusion of reality is once again an abstraction. Um, if you have never um, looked at the French artist Magritte, he's one of my absolute favorites because he does a lot of fun illusions. And he was part of the surrealistic movement uh, during the turn of the century. And he's got one piece, and it says, C'est une pipe? I'm, excuse my French because I'm not a French speaker, but basically it, it translates from French. He, he painted a pipe and he wrote on it, this is not a pipe um, because it looks like a pipe because the illusion on the two-dimensional surface to our eye is that, yes, indeed, that is a pipe. But in fact, it's not a pipe. It's basically paint on a canvas and it is giving your eye a, th a, a two-dimensional illusion of a three-dimensional pipe and I just I, I love the fact that that he put that in a gallery and basically he painted a pipe and said hey this isn't a pipe just like what I'm drawing here right now technically is a bunch of, of lines made out of ink and graphite and paper. It's not a jellyfish, but it is the illusion of a jellyfish. It's the sense of a jellyfish. It's, you know, so that when you or a child looked at a, the picture, they would see two things. They would see the letter J, because we know the symbol that has this shape is what we call the letter J. And it is also a jellyfish. So it is standing, so it is a symbol on paper that stands for the letter J. And it also stands for a jellyfish. And that's, that's kind of a fun, complicated um, visual illusion to introduce to kids. And it shows you how sophisticated um, our ability to see and understand things is at a very early age. And um, I like double entendres. I like double meanings to things. I, I, I've always, I like puns and I like jokes of that nature. Um, and that's why I, I really enjoy the, the double illusion on those things. Okay, so let me put a little bit, now we'll go and give some detail to the top of our jellyfish here. And I'm going to stop the video here and um, uh, do the painting in the next one for the simple reason that, that this has been long enough. Um, but also, when you are um, working in ballpoint pen as your base drawing for a piece of artwork, it's really a good idea to maybe let it cure for about, yeah minimum of around 20, 30 minutes, just so that um, the water is basically water resistant, um, but it's always good to give it a little bit of drying time. So number one, when you're going over it, you don't smear it. And number two, it, um, it won't, some of it will wash away. That's why the very last thing I do on any painting that I've done with a uh, ballpoint pen base is I'll go over it one more time to heavy up um, the lines that have been somewhat washed away or have been gone over by pigment because watercolor does have pigment in it and it will um, occlude some of the lines that you put in. So there's 
our jellyfish drawing and we're going to come back in the next video and I'm going to show you how to erase off the lines and we're going to paint the jellyfish. Thank you very much for stopping by. My name again is Lynn Hunter, L-L-Y-N-H-U-N-T-E-R. Please um, subscribe and like. I put up um, a short video once a week. Um, go back and look at some of the other ones. Maybe there's something in them that uh, you'll find interesting and um, you'll have fun with. But again, this is the jellyfish. This is a Portuguese man of war. So that's why we got we've got the jellyfish. You'll, you'll know they very look very very similar. You know they still have both the spaghetti legs and everything, but but this happens to be a Portuguese man of war, and that is our jellyfish. Okay, thank you very much for stopping by. I really appreciate it. Have a great week.